Thank you. Welcome everyone uh, to this memorial and celebration of life of Dr. A.N. Obiago. It's a pleasure to have you all with us. Um, to start, the, my name is Noma Ilogu, niece of Uncle Namdis, as he was fondly called. Uh, to start this event, we will be beginning with a prayer by Pastor B. Oduwale. Pastor B is the head pastor of Messiah is Coming Church in Ibadan, and he also was a very dear friend and pastor of Okunandis. Pastor B. Oduwale, over to you. Thank you, Father and our God, for the opportunity that we have to be to partake of this gathering here today in memory of our dear brother, Dr. Nandi Obiago. Father, we thank you for the life that you has that you led, that you gave him the grace to lead. Thank you for the opportunity that we had, every one of us, to be a part of his life. As parents, as wife, as relations, uncles, brothers, sisters, as wife, as children, we are grateful, O oh Lord. As brethren in the house of God, we are grateful for the opportunity that we to share the things of God, to share the things of life with him. You have found me to, O oh Lord, imperative to call him unto yourself. And we thank you. But we know that all things work together unto good for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. That his transition to glory is for his good, O oh Lord, and will rejoice in it. Thank you, our Father and our God. Lord, this memorial that has been put together is for the living, it is not for the dead. For the dead are gone. And the Bible says that after death comes judgment. But the living have an opportunity to make amends in their lives. The living have an opportunity to remember that one day we shall also be called to judgment before you. The living have an opportunity to make the necessary corrections in life to make an impact on the life of others and to make this world a better place for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this event. Let it have the necessary impact on everyone who will partake of it in Jesus Christ's name. Those who will listen, those who will watch, Father, let it touch them. Let your glory be made manifest in everything that will be done here today, Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We commit all things unto your hands. Let us not hear the voice of any man today, Lord. Let us hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in everything that we do here today, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take all the glory, Heavenly Father, as we commit all things unto your hands. And let us all be great beneficiaries, O Lord, of the wisdom that will boost forth from all the activities that we are undertaking here today. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name forever. Right name we have prayed. Amen. Our praise and worship will be led by Chris Bright, who is the God, who's a gospel artist and lead vocalist for a star, uh, storehouse. Um, also, please note that the program will be circulated in the chat, so make sure to check the chat uh, intermittently so you can follow along. Many thanks.
have won the victory. You have won the victory. could not hold you you are the reason king oh, oh, oh. you are seated in majesty oh, 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 oh. you are the reason king Our first team, uh, count your blessings. 
will be led by Chris Bright. Please note that the order of service is in the chat, so you can follow along and view what is in your order of service. Thanks.
help and comfort give you to your journey's end. So count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. First read from Ecclesiastics 3, 1 through 8 will be taken by Ijeawele Obiago. This Bible reading is taken from Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 to 18. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sew. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Praise the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This We're going to spend a moment listening to tributes from friends, loved ones, and family of Dr. N. Obiago, A. N. Obiago. We're gonna start with Ambassador Howard F. Jeter, and then Amara Obiago, Mrs. Jane Onyejiaka, Mrs. Ogugwa Iwenofu Chimwoku, and Dr. No Ilogo. Good morning, everyone. My name is Howard Jeter, and I am uh, a former American ambassador to Nigeria. Uh, and I've served in this country really for more than the three years that I was here as ambassador. But it's more like um, two decades I've had an association with Nigeria. I'm here this morning to just mention the relationship that I had with Namdi Obiago. Namdi was one of my best friends. Um, as I said, I've, we, we've known each other for over 20 years, and uh, I have nothing but good things to say about Namdi. Let me turn my attention, however, to the Obiago family. They've endured hard times over the past two years. First, there was the passing of their brother Uche, who uh, was uh, much loved in the family and who was buried last year uh, here in the United States. Namdi loved his family. His wife, his children, meant the world to him. 
He also loved his siblings. Jane, Joe, Uche, and Vincent. God has decided to take Namde away from us at a premature time. I talked to Namdi um, many times while he was here in the U.S., but I spoke to him about two days before he returned to Nigeria, and he called to let me know that he was leaving, which I much appreciated. Um, but he didn't have any reticence about coming back to Nigeria. As a matter of fact, he was certain that um, from the point of view of health and public health, he would be fine. But Namde certainly was gone too soon. I, I just wish that there was some way that we could turn the hands of the clock back and he could see what awaited him once he arrived in Nigeria. But that's not possible. Uh, I want to say goodbye to my dear friend. I wish I could have been in Nigeria for your homegoing, but I'm glad I can be there virtually uh, for your memorial. Rest well. You did an outstanding job as a person, as an individual, as a sibling, as a husband, and as a father. And you have a lot to be proud of. So farewell, my friend. And I'll meet you on the other side. They say people often forget your words, but they remember how you made them feel. That was certainly the case for Uncle Namdi. During many years when I was a child, I don't really remember what he said, but I can always remember how he made me feel and how he made the house feel when he visited. As many of you may know, Uncle Namdi lived in Ibadan and visited Lagos frequently. I'm happy to say, usually, if not always, he was our house guest. In true Uncle Namdi fashion, a great entrance, preferably dramatic, was always on the table. I could remember an, any random evening, my mother saying, hey, please go on, you know, get Uncle Namdi's room ready. He has called me, he'll be here. He's arriving. To many, this would seem annoying, but to me, it was always welcomed because of how he made everyone feel. Uncle Namdi was not the type of person to be rude or profane. He didn't pick on people and didn't exploit their weaknesses. He was simply a nice guy and someone that was easy to converse with. At least I realized that with age. As a child, I didn't really enjoy him always asking me about my grades, but as I grew older, I became, became to bother me a little bit less. Um, his visits were even better when accompanied by Auntie June and Luki. It was like a mini family vacation on any given weekend. Go to the movies, go to church, lunch after church, all the fun things. Um, Everything was fun, lighthearted, and more pleasant when they were around, especially my father's temper. Um, I know looking back at these, that these are some of the sweetest memories of my childhood. In addition to always being a nice guy to hang out with, Uncle Namdi has, at least for me, has just always been there as part of the furniture and you know, always been part of my life. As I grew older, I began to admire Uncle Namdi for his, at least what I'll call his combat style. What I mean by that is never attack, always defend and protect. That's why he was such a nice guy until you messed with him. 
and then it was a different story. Some of you may know this already, and I may remember this person as Tony or Uncle Tony. However, by the time I came around, he was the more tame great uncle Namdis. However, over the past couple of years, with me living in DC and him coming to visit Auntie Jane frequently, Uncle Namdi and I began to bond and he started showing me a little bit of that toniness side of him. He became a form of political thought mentor for me, sharing his views, his ideas, and his plans. This is really what made us get close, our deep love of economics, politics, and ultimately the fate of the black race. Uncle Namdi and I had big plans, and I'm deeply saddened that he's not here to see them through. Uncle Namdi, I promise you that our plans, that I will see our plans through. You can rest in peace and know that your dream, vision, fight, and memory will forever live on. I love you dearly, Uncle Namdi, and you'll be very much missed. What can I say about Uncle Namdi? Uncle Namdi was like a very big brother to me. Uncle Namdi was wonderful. He was charming. He had a very personable character with his very charming smile. You know, he would really entertain you when he was there. Many times when he comes to Maryland, if it was my birthday, he will take Auntie Jane and I out to eat. You know, he will really entertain us, give you gifts and everything. You know, Uncle Namdi would come every time. He was a very, very caring man. He would ask after all the members of my family one by one. He would really want to know how they are doing. You know, if I had a problem, Uncle Namdi would go to the extent, you know, and he will help, you know, and he will not rest until that problem was solved. You know, if I had uh, good news, he will celebrate me. me my joy was his joy my sadness was his sadness and i remember 10 years ago he was uh, is a family man anything he will go to the extent and he will attend 10 years ago when my brother-in-law passed uncle namdi went all the way to unquere with dubes that was so 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 touching Oh, Kunamdi was a family man. I remember the last time I told him my father had passed. Oh my God, he parked his car and he felt really, really sad. Oh, Uncle Namdi, we miss you so much. You know, my daughter was just, um, when I told her that Uncle Namdi had passed, she was so, so sad. She said, oh, mommy, you know, when 10 years ago, when I write an article, Uncle Namdi would really encourage me, tell me how good the article was, you know, and that I would make a very good writer. And true to you, truly, Ten years later, she's riding up a storm. She writes for magazines. And she said one word that really touched me. She said, oh, when I write a book, who is going to read it? Uncle Namdi was so caring, you know. He took time in the things that affected you, you know. He cared, so caring. Uncle Namdi and us and Auntie Jane, when he's in Maryland, we would attend uh, many functions together. You know, he has such a very charming personality and he could charm everybody. When he entered the room, he had such a presence, you know, and I was proud that he was my big brother. The, when I heard the news that Uncle Namdi had passed, you know, I had a call at 5.30 a.m. to go to Auntie Jane's place. Man, that drive, I was like a zombie when I got there. I could not believe it. I could not believe it. Even when I heard it, it was so surreal. Hey, Uncle Namdi, you have gone and you have left a deep, deep hole in our hearts. You have left a big, huge void in our lives. Ah, uh, I pray that God will strengthen all the members of the family. God will strengthen Auntie Jane. God will strengthen Uncle 
uh, God will strengthen Dubis, God will strengthen his wife June, his daughters Obi, Namdi, and Luki. Because only God, only God can help heal and console the family. Uncle Namdi, adieu. I know God loved you more, but we love you. We love you. God bless you. We'll, we're, we here will help take care of your children. We will keep an eye on them just like you did when you were here. Uh, adieu. May your soul continue to rest in peace. Amen. I am honored and heartbroken to be here today to celebrate the life of a brother, Namdi. Fondly called the tall girl by the family, Jane and I go back over 50 years. And that's how long I have shared the love and protection of our brothers. When I heard the shocking news, my heart went out to Tony's children, Namdi Jr., Obias and Luki, and to his widow June, all of whom he spoke so fondly about in our conversations. I knew how devastated my sister Jane would be, but could only imagine how our Duby would feel, suddenly exposed as the oldest male in the family without the support and protection of his big brothers, which he enjoyed for over half a century. I am so sorry for this great loss. Tony loved and served God with unwavering faith. He was a peacemaker. Though his death seems too early, with his dedication, he was probably more prepared at 63 than most 90-year-olds. His passing has left a painful void, but his love, smile and laughter Our memories we cherish. May these memories bring you peace. How we each grieve our own loss is regardless of how small, big or seemingly significant our shared memories are. As they say, those we love can never be more than a thought away. As long as there is a memory, they live in our hearts to stay. Namdi's star will continue to shine very brightly in the hearts of all the lives it has touched, especially his family. He will be sorely missed. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. The tall girl. It's hard to believe that Bros Namdis is gone. It's uh really a big shock to the system. Over the years, we had grown closer, especially with technology, being able to communicate in various ways and with him spending more time here in the United States. We talked on a great deal of topics and over the years, he had also been a good source of, a wise source of counsel on various matters. We certainly believe that he's resting in the bosom of the Lord and we pray 
for strength for the entire family at this time. Vras Namdis was a gentle giant, a man of peace, and he will be greatly missed. Definitely. Yes, we'll definitely miss him. Um, I personally would miss the phone calls that would come, sometimes trying to reach out to Noel, but to come to me, and then we'll have a nice, good com conversation. Um, it's, it's still a big blow, but God knows best, and we know he's resting in peace. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. 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 We thank God for the memories that we have because we know that with these memories, he will forever live on in our lives, in our hearts, and in all that we do. His legacy definitely will be carried on. Our second yeah. hymn, Trust and Obey, will be led by Chris Bright. For those who are just joining, please note that the order of service is in the chat. Please uh, take a look at it and along. Thank you. Trust and 
sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the same to reflect on the life of Dr. Ea Nobiago through a slideshow of photos, after which we will have reflections that will be taken by Mr. Chidi Logu, S-A-N, and Mr. Val Chuka Wandu. You are listening to Papa Choir. Featuring the Peter and Bridget Obiago grandkids. Oh, where are you, Quasa? Kaliangiwa. Oh, where are you, Quasa? Kaliangiwa. Oh, Pangi, but you quay, ma. Oh, Sisongi. Oh, Pangi, but you quay, ma. Oh, Pasisongi. There is no other God but Jehovah. 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 It is Him that we know as the living God. And our Lord Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son. There is none as holy as our Lord. There is none as holy as our Lord. There is none like our God. Holy as Lord. Oh, where 
tu cosa caliente va Oh era tu cosa caliente va Oh quando tu tu vai ma si sondi Oh quando tu tu vai ma papà si sondi There is no other god but Jehovah 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 It is him that we know as the living god And I know Jesus Christ his only begotten son There is no as holy as our Lord There is no as holy as our Lord There is no Love you, Papa. Love you, Papa. Now we'll have the reflections by Mr. Chi Ilogu S A N and Mr. Val Chuka Wandu. As I reflect on the life and times of my cousin Nandi, I recognize that life is indeed a journey. We grew up as children of two siblings, his dad and my mom, and we all lived out in Lagos as kids, visiting from time to time over the weekends and sharing meals together. And from there, we went on to living our time during the Civil War. They were in Ubon and we were in Ihel. At the end of the Civil War, we ended up moving again to Enugu and to Soka. Through it all, we, were, we retained friendships and kept in touch with one another. The next I remember was I went off to study at the University of Ife and Namdi traveled off to the United States. Then I had the privilege of visiting him when I went for a bar association conference in New Orleans and we went to the Mardi Gras together. That was fun. And of course that exposed me a little more to Namdi's lifestyle. Then we settled down in Lagos as young couples, he started out in business and I in legal practice. But I realized he had a knack for entrepreneurship and that led him into mining. But what is most interesting is that as time went on, Namdi became strong in his relationship with Christ. He gave his life to Christ and was very committed to reaching out to people and sharing the gospel message. But that didn't change him from being the same Nandi that he was. Very amiable and caring. He always had that interest in reaching out and helping to build bridges with relationships and family. And of course, he being a good ambassador for Christ, never missed out an opportunity to share the word. And I believe that was a strong turning point in his life. And so I want to thank God for his life. I want to trust that the good Lord will uphold you and the children. May the good Lord give them consolation and his peace at this time. Amen. We have Mr. Va Chuka Wandu. A reflection 
on life of Anthony Nnamdi Obiago. It is a statement of fact that these days there's lots of sorrow in the land, everywhere, all over the world. Both far and near, people are experiencing very many challenges. Loved ones are suddenly lost. Jobs and means of livelihood so many are lost. The joy of fellowship amongst families, amongst brethren, amongst friends also seem to be lost. Just a few days before Namdi passed, my wife, Diana, and I lost our son, John. It is an understatement to say these are trying times. But, there is a but. But it is also a fact that no matter how dark the night is, the sun will rise in the morning. No matter the thickness of the cloud, it will move on. God Almighty, our Father who is in heaven, is still on his throne. We are all still his children, and his love for us is unquestionable. This is true, and we live by believing it. For us, Christians, death has lost its sting. We believe there is life after death. Apostle Paul says, to die is to go be with the Lord. For our brother, our father, our husband, and our friend, Anthony Nnamdi Obia, he has gone to be with the Lord. We miss him. We will always miss him. But let's not despair. Death could not take away our memories of him. Let's remember the good times we shared and cling to them and find ways to honor his memory. I remember Nandi as always smiling. As children, I remember we played together during Sunday visits that our parents liked to have. Then for a long time, I did not see him until we were teenagers and I ran into him at a club in Lagos, a club called Hotspots. There was another long space of time in between before I ran into him in Washington, D.C. And another long space of time before I ran into him at a hotel in VI in 2001. His loving wife, Joan, had just given birth to their son, Luke, and he couldn't wait to introduce me to them. The point is this, each time we ran into each other, it was as if we just saw each other yesterday. The friendship, the brotherly love picks up and off we go. Next time, who knows? I fully expect that we'll run into each other in heaven and the brotherly love and friendship will pick up and continue. This time, forever, in new, heavenly, incorruptible bodies. One name. Commissia to command. Celebrating his life through music, we have a special performance by Tara and Bella, his nieces and daughters of his best friend, fondly remembered as Uncle Yu. There will be mountains that I will have 
to climb And there will be battles That I will have to fight The victory or defeat It's up to me to decide But how can I expect to win If I never try I just can't give up now Come too far from where I started from told me the road would be easy and I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me never said there wouldn't be trials never said I wouldn't fall never said that everything would go the way I wanted to go But when my back is against the wall And I feel all hope is gone I just lift my head up to the sky And say help me to be strong, Lord I just can't give up now too far from where I started from Oh, nobody told me the road would be easy And I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me Oh, oh I know you didn't bring me out here to leave Even when I can't see clearly I know that you are with me So I can't oh, I just can't Oh no Said I've come too far From where I started From Nobody told me It's not gonna be This far said I can't give up now. Oh, I just can't. No, no. Said I've come too far, yo. From where I started from. Nobody told me, no. It's not gonna be. This far, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, just can't, just can't. I come too far from where I started. From nobody told me it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be. Don't believe, oh no Said I can't give up now Oh no, 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 no no. Said I've come too far Too far No one said it would be easy It's not Papa. Reading from uh, Matthew 24, 36 through 44 will be read by Manuela Obiago, his goddaughter and niece. Matthew 24, verses 36 through 44. 
But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding in the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what your hour doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. This is the word of the Lord. Our next set of reflections will be taken by Apostle J.O. Nathan Sr. and Miss Annette Edozian. Uh, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, this is my... Um, reflection a remembrance of my precious brother uh, Dr. Anthony Namdi Obiago. Then I had the distinct words of a voice from heaven saying right, blessed, happy, prosperous to be admired are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, blessed indeed says the spirit so that they may rest and have the relief from their labels for their deeds do follow them indeed revelations 14 13 from the amplified fashion faith has so many interesting and poignant ways of wielding destinies together as we pursue our fate in christ jesus uh, my rather snapshot memories of my brother and friend, Dr. Namdi Obiago, called after the glorious home going of his senior brother here in Maryland, Evangelist Uche, just about a year ago. Uh, we met up a few times alone in the quiet and sleepy afternoons of uh, a mild winter in Columbia, Maryland. Those were awesome and unforgettable uh, moments we shared. You know, we extensively I looked at life experiences and journeys of life. Uh, we found scripture about inner you know, guidance and we prayed fervently. Uh, he trusted me with his family's uh, histories and the ups and downs of life and his aspirations uh, for how best to serve God with the rest of his life. You know, his stories were deeply moving and clinical and never sparing the details, as you all know, for clarity, with amazing precision and transparency. And that's who he was. He was not a man that left anything important in the gray. Most of all, he shared his desire to spend more time here in Maryland and with me especially, um, to be mentored and set in place for ministry. He was fully persuaded about that and but this, you know, pandemic kind of threw things out of sorts. Uh, that seemed to be most consuming and important thing of life to him at that particular time. And how that's how best to serve Jesus with what I call reckless abandon and uh, just unfined love. When we prayed, it was fervent, sincere and effective. You sense you are joined in the spirit with a true man of God who has submitted everything of life into the will of Abba Father. He held nothing back as we explored God's words and prayed. I sensed his faith's resolve, courage, and joy increasingly towering. His earthly accomplishments were nearly unimportant to him at those moments as his unquenchable quest for Jesus and God's presence was obvious. So the shock of his loss and yet the, the comfort of his departure 
to home sweet home in heaven are received with fortitude of the spirit but um very painful indeed and upon hearing of his home going i immediately visited my sister mr jane on february 10th and spent part of the day with her and then sharing with her and the boys while we were praying, the Lord flashed the face of my brother Namdi to me. He was radiant, joyful, full of zeal and zest, just like I knew him over here. It was a very reassuring countenance, indicated that all is well where he is right now, and that he is home indeed with the Lord. I shared with my sister what has been revealed, and we rejoiced and praised God for his goodness and mercies that endure forever. Glory be to God. So my prayer is that the Lord himself who has received his son and servant home in heaven will comfort and strengthen the Obiago family and friends in the name of Jesus. My brother Naimdi, I know that you are resting well in the bosom of Jesus, in the full blossom and joy of the Lord. Praise the Lord. We should join you in the fullness of time. Adieu, Shalom. Apostle Joshua Nathan, Senior, Maryland, USA, Pastor of Glory Center in Maryland. God bless you. Shalom. Beloved brethren, eternal life begins here. As we gather today for Tony's memorial, I do not grieve in a worldly way. But in godly sorrow, for this brings repentance that leads to salvation. And now this passing is a time to contemplate our own journey. Do you believe in God? Do you know Christ? Have you really, really accepted Jesus and totally surrendered all to him? Do you trust in divine mercy? Are you truly connected to him? Is your faith the size of a mustard seed? That mustard seed that moves mountains. What do you hunger and thirst for? Accepting Christ's invitation to give up everything, obey the commandments and follow him is all it takes to eternal life in Jesus. He tells us that in his father's house there are many mansions and he has gone to prepare a place and will come back to take us. He has just taken Namdis to that mansion if we believe in Christ's promises and submit to the will of his Father, just as he did, we will not be afraid of death. But with a holy enthusiasm, we will live our lives and lay our treasures up above. Even while in this world, we will not be of this world. In keeping our focus on God and having a close relationship with him, we enjoy eternal life here and beyond with Christ. Eternal fire is prepared for those who fail to accept Jesus. We must renounce the devil and his works, the flesh with all its temptations. Wide indeed is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to perdition. Let us choose the small gate and the narrow road that leads to life. It is not easy, but we have grace. Namdi Antonio Biago made that choice. He took his discipleship seriously and lived out his faith. Brethren, what does it really profit anyone to gain the whole world but lose his soul? It is God's will that we have eternal life. And this is a delightful inheritance, isn't it? Let us do everything to protect this gift. Tony has fought the good fight. He has kept the faith and finished the race. What about you? What about me? I have said nothing new. I am only reminding you all of our Lord's promises. Because the familiar is often overlooked to our detriment, let us refocus and stand on Christ, the solid rock. All other ground is sinking ground. May the soul of Namdi, Antonio Biago, rest in perfect peace. God bless you all. Stay safe. Keep well. Thank you for listening to this reflection. Bye. Yes reflecting on the life of Uncle Nandis. I can't help but remember some memories that I shared yeah. with him and it was in Auntie Jane's house and I think someone had told Auntie Jane that I 
do a very good impression of the Obiago accent. <laughs> and, you know, not that happen. <laughs> and I remember Aunt Jane telling Uncle Namdi, saying, eh? You man, and you went on a bus, so you can really do it. And so he was like, okay, do it. And then I did it. And we just laughed. And those are the memories that I remember of him, how he had this youthfulness at his core. Uncle Namdi's was always dripping in fashion. He looked so good and carried such enormous joy on the inside of him that came in touch with everyone who, who was around him. And that's what we remember. That's what we celebrate this evening. Next up, we have a performance by Kaline. Kaline is a musical artist and classical pianist, and also a very dear friend of Uncle Namdis's daughter, Obias. When Ecclesiastics 12, 13, and 14, and will be read by Dante Obiago, nephew and only son of his youngest brother, Joe Obiago. Ecclesiastics chapter 12, verse 13 to 14. Let us hear the conclusions of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment, with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Now we have the eulogy by Minister Jane Obiago. Jane Obiago is chef extraordinaire, creative family matriarch, and Uncle Namdi's only beloved sister. How do you eulogize or say goodbye to someone who is so very much alive, who is a part of you and whom you've never known life without? I always imagined you'll be there when we grow old. 
who would have told me that on that fateful day, when you held out Mama Jesco, as I was talking to June, that that would be the last time I will hear your sweet, melodious voice here on earth. Paparazzi, you left without saying goodbye, and it hurts so much. My heart is broken. But let me talk about my brother Nnamdi, my exceptional brother, an exceptional human being, whom everything about him was to the extreme. He had an exceptionally brilliant mind and was one of the few people that scored A's in both the science and the arts. In fact, add math, statistics, and all those difficult subjects did not stand a chance. He excelled in them all. Namdi started showing entrepreneurial skills while he was still in university. He's, he formed his first company, International Trade Routes, while he was still in his early 20s and started handling big government contracts and shipping and marketing goods between Nigeria, Europe, and the U.S. At that very tender age, he was able to create the opportunity for my younger brother, Joe, and myself to join him in the U.S. And I remain eternally grateful to him for that opportunity. He was a very meticulous person, meticulous about everything, and his physical appearance was very important to him. A very well-groomed man with exquisite and impeccable taste, who will not step out until he was sure nothing was out of place. Namdi stood tall and regal with a smile that lit up any room that he walked into. A refined gentleman who always stood out in the crowd. Older family members would tell us stories of how even before the age of four, that once you dressed him up, he will immediately run to the mirror, pose in front of the mirror, smile and say to himself, Anto Marama, meaning Anto is handsome. Namdi was such a cute child who grew up to become a charismatic and outstanding leader of our time. Namdi was a compassionate, caring, gentle, kind-hearted, tender and loving person who brought peace wherever he entered. He genuinely cared about people and their issues and spent a lot of time trying to resolve and elevate problems. He always made time out of his busy schedule to pray for people's needs and even engage them individually to broker peace and reconciliation. He was straightforward and found it difficult to hide his feelings. With an almost childlike openness, he will let you know if he was offended and will equally forgive you if you showed the slightest remorse. Namdi spent more time in the U.S. than any of my other brothers. And over the last decade and more, he became my number one confidant and chief advisor. And in recent times, he became my prayer partner. He was a prayerful man, a prayer warrior, and a man who loved to worship the Lord. We spent a lot of quality time together on our knees and in fervent prayers for the family. He was a man of faith and entrusted every aspect of his life to the Almighty God. We did not see his sudden exit coming, but just like our brother 
always chose to trust the Lord, that is what we would do. We would just trust the Lord that he knows best, even in this circumstance. Mm -hmm. My paparazzi, my special name for him, we will miss you so much. It aches, it aches. But we are so grateful to God for blessing us with the gift of you. Anthony Nnamdi Obiago. Anto Maloma. Thank you, Lord, for allowing such a beautiful, beautiful soul. Our last Bible reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 10, and it will be read by Mrs. Dee Dee Scott, the eldest daughter of Uncle Uche Obiago. Love is patient, love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. Word of the Lord, thanks be to God. The exhortation will be taken by Pastor B. Oduwale. We give you all the glory. We give you all honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Father, let your word hold on open our hearts today that we may know you that we may fear you and that we may walk with you. That on the day when we have to meet with you, O Lord, that it shall be well with our souls in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we are prayed. This sermon is titled Ubiago. Ubiago, the pathway to heaven. Ubiago, the pathway to heaven. I am told that Obiago is an abridged form of Obiago. I hope I got that right. Which means that the king sees all things. The king knows all things. And truly, the king sees all things and the king knows all things. All of those in the Obiago family carry with them a well of inspiration to eternal life by the name that they bear. Because the name itself is a pointer to a way of life. It's a pointer to the way to God's heart. And it's a pointer to eternal life in heaven. A story is told of a man who wanted to have an adulterous relationship with a woman. The woman needed his favor, and he insisted that unless he slept with this woman, he was not going to grant that favor. So the woman said, okay, fine. If that's what you want, I'll give it to you. But first, find an exclusive place where nobody will see us. You know I'm a married woman. So the man found an exclusive place where nobody was around. Then he said, now lock all the doors and all the windows so that nobody would peep in and would see us. So the man locked all the doors and all the windows. Then the woman said, there's one more door to lock. You have to lock the door of heaven 
so that God will not see us as we do this thing. And at that point, that man's hand was completely taken. He remembered that there was no way he could hide from God. He remembered that God truly knows all things, that the King of Kings knows all things, that the King of Kings sees all things, and that there was no way he could hide from him. And he surrendered and did what that woman wanted and abstained from having that illicit relationship with her. Now, the king knows everything. There's no doubt about that. But regretfully, regrettably, many of us conduct our lives as if he does not see us. Many of us conduct our lives as if he does not know the things that we do. We pursue things that he has forbidden in our lives. We do things that he says he does not want us to do. We involve in things that are clearly stated in his word that we should not be doing. But not only does he see us, not only does he see everything, he knows all the thoughts of our hearts as well. He sees the spirit that searches the heart of every man. The innermost thoughts of our hearts are well known to him and they are all open to him. So there is no way we can hide from the kings, the king of kings, the lord of lords. He's a super king. He's a king above all kings. So when Obiago says that the king knows everything, Obiago is even understanding the capacity of God. Because if the king knows all things, then the king of kings must know far above all the things that are supposed to happen in the life of a man. That's why we say that God knows the end from the beginning. Even the things that are not known to be God already knows because he's the king of kings. Many of us do not acknowledge him as that and we do not treat him as that. We believe, we all believe of us in judgment after death, that when we die, we will face judgment. It's clearly written in the Bible. It is a portion to man, to man to die but once, and after death comes judgment. But somehow, we believe that, oh, we will get past that. Somehow, the things that we have done, the ills that we have done in this world will not be remembered against us. And we continue in our ways, think, hoping and thinking and believing that God will miss out on the evils of our lives and somehow we'll find ourselves in heaven. His words to us, they are clear, they are not ambiguous. Do not kill, do not steal, do not fornicate, do not fight, do not gossip. All of these things are clearly stated in places in the Bible like in Galatians 5, 19 to 21, they are all of the ills are stated. And it says, people who do these kinds of things will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Yes, we hope to inherit the kingdom of heaven. We, we want to inherit the kingdom of heaven and we engage in all of these things. Hoping for a miracle that something will happen and we will not be judged by God in all of the things that we do. We ascribe to the standards of the world we ascribe the standards of the world to God. What do men do? What happens in the world? On earth, we cover our tracks very well. We cook books in companies. We evade tax and the IRS does not catch us. We embezzle funds and the financial institutions cannot do anything unto us. The EFCC in Nigeria, for example, many have slipped through their nets. And we judge God by the standards of these things that happen to us. Because men escape judgment here on earth, we think somehow, somehow we will escape judgment when we die. We fiddle with all kinds of things. But the scriptures speak up clearly unto us about all of these things. They show us examples of people who did these kinds of things, of people who walk the way that we are walking now and what happened unto them. The Bible says that all of these things have been written as admonitions and as warnings unto us that we may not walk that path, but yet we walk all of this path. When King David slept with Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, 
Obiah God. God saw him when he plotted to kill Uriah or to plant an unwanted pregnancy on him. Obiah God, God saw it and had it. When he sent the letter to Job to put Uriah on the first line and withdraw from him so that he would be struck down, Obiah God, God had it and he knew it. And David did all of those things. And many of us follow in those paths today. Our disdain for the omnipresence and omniscience of God, his capacity to be everywhere at the same time, and his capacity to have full knowledge of everything, our disdain for it is, 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 is marveling. Yes, we, we say we believe he's omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, but do we act it? If he's omnipresent, then it means he's with you at every point. Why do you do the things that you do? Does he not see you? If he's working with you, he sees all the things that you do. Therefore, it is because you believe he's not there that you are doing those things. We have been overpowered by the sense, by the physical senses, the physical senses, the sense of touch, the sense of sight, the sense of smell. All of those physical senses, those five physical senses, they have over overpowered us and we react to them. We do the things that those senses have taught us over the years. And we apply those things to God and think that God is not going to uh, 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 be able to, to hold us to account for those many things that we did. He held David to account. When King Saul was sent to kill all the, uh, the people in Amalek and he speared their goats and their sheep, God was there. He saw it. He saw the sheep. He saw the goats. And Samuel told him, because God had told him ahead, he said, what is this bleating that I hear in my ears? Because the king knew. There's nothing that you do in your life that the king does not know. He himself said in his word, he said the things that are done in the innermost recesses of the rooms will be blown open at the rooftops. They will be declared publicly. You cannot hide from him. And if you cannot hide from him, I wonder what kind of games that we are playing when we say that, uh, 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 when we continue to do all of these things, hoping that somehow something will wipe them away. There is no excuse for not meeting the commandments of God. We, we disobey the physical commandments. We also do likewise to the spiritual commandments. One of the greatest commandments that God has given us is the Great Commission. He says, go in and make disciples of all nations. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, he's very explicit and he's very clear about it. Many of us ignore it. Even pastors ignore it. He does not leave anybody out. It is meant for everyone who claims to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Somehow you have heard about him and you have come to Christ and he expects you to win a soul for him as well. When you do not do that, it is disobedience. It is disobedience. There are three ways by which souls are won. Those who speak directly unto them. Those who use their money to support the activities of missionaries and evangelists who are out on the field win, win, win the souls. And those who pray, who pray for those who go out on the field, that the Lord will empower them. And who pray for those who will receive the word of God, that the Lord will open their hearts, that the words that they receive will bring them fully unto Christ. If we don't do any of these three in our lifetime, when judgment comes, there's no way we are going to please the Lord. It is the only thing, the only thing that God has asked of man. All other things that God has written in the Bible, don't do this, don't do this, are for the benefit of men. They are not for the benefit of God. If you steal and you are caught and you die, how does that affect God? If you commit sexual immorality and you contract HIV, how does that affect God? He's still God. Nothing happens to him like that. So all of the commandments are not for him. They are for us that we may live a good life and we may inherit eternal life. 
But the only one that he directly benefits from is the Great Commission. And any person who neglects that, who neglects that, cannot oh. make a right to claim to eternal life. No matter how well you have obeyed all us. The, the Bible says to you, if you break one law, you are a lawbreaker and you have you might as well have broken all laws. Everybody together. The Lord be great commission. Guide us. Most important of all of the laws. You are a super law. There you are. Many of us ignore the, these things. And the king sees it. He watches and he observes the things that we are doing. When you ignore the commission, the king that you want to ignore you one day, when the time comes, he will ignore you because you have ignored him. His word says, those who honor me, I will honor. The obverse is true. Those who dishonor me, I will dishonor. If you refuse to do his bidding, if you refuse to bring honor to him by winning souls for him, if you refuse to populate heaven, then he will dishonor you too in his own way on that day. He said, if you deny me in the presence of men, not winning souls is denying him in the presence of men. He says, I will deny you in the presence of angels and my father. May the Lord don't deny us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But why do we behave as if God cannot see us? Why do we do these things? Why do we carry on as if he's a blind and a deaf God? We know there is God. All of us believe there is God. All of us are affirm our faith in Christ Jesus. Why then do we do things that portend or that say that he, he can't see the things that we are doing? He's a handicapped God. Why? He himself gives us an answer. In Isaiah 57, verse 11. In Isaiah 57, verse 11, he gives us an answer there. I'm not going to repeat it. He says, is it not because I have been long silent that you do not fear me? Is it not because I have been long silent that you do not fear me? Ask those who serve the devil. Ask those who go to, to, to which dollar doctors. Ask those who are in covenants, in, 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 in courts and in other kinds of uh, society. They dare not, they dare not step out of bounds in anything that they are told. The fear of their master rules their lives. But because we have a God who is merciful and compassionate and who is long suffering, who does not wake up one morning and, and begin to kill people for the things that they have done. We think he's weak and he cannot act. He says so in Isaiah 57, 11, says, that's why you have no respect for me. That's why you think I don't see you because I have not woken on for one morning and made everyone who has lied a cripple. I have not woken up one morning and see that everyone who has told him suddenly have no hands. It's the devil that operates like that. That's not our God. But if we know the kind of God that, that he is, should that be a license for us to take him for granted and to do the things that we know he does not want us to do? God is long silent because he's waiting patiently. He's waiting patiently for you to change your ways. He's waiting patiently for you to change your ways. When he's provoked and gives up on man, becomes a consuming fire. May he never be provoked and forced to give up on any one of us in Jesus Christ's name. King Saul knows the story very well. A man who was picked out of the entire multitude as king, he provoked God to give up on him and God became a consuming fire in his life. He and his entire family were destroyed in one day. That is what God can be to those who take him for granted. Many of us have taken him for granted for so long that, that we think it is normal to take God for granted. But he's waiting patiently, not tired, hoping that somewhere along the line we will come to our senses and we will realize that the things that we do are not the right things and we will take the appropriate measures 
to 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 overcome uh, uh, the evils that are present in our lives. In Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13, Solomon tells us about the whole duty of man, what we came into this world to do. What have we come here to, to do? He said the whole duty of man is fear God and obey his commandments. Fear God and obey his commandments. The path to the fear of God is obey God. God bless all of those who bear that name. Each time you call that name, you should tremble with fear. You should tremble with fear because you are calling judgment on yourself. Because you are affirming that God sees you and he sees all the things that you are doing. The fear of God, the path to it is to be a God. The recognition of the fact that nothing, nothing is hidden from him. Nothing is hidden from him. Obiago, the, the path to the whole duty of man. Any, Yes, sir. Read the whole. Thank you, Pastor Duale, for that wonderful exhortation. Next, we will go into our last set of tributes that will be done by Mrs. Anne Mwabuku. Dr. Sonfetruku Mwobu, Mrs. Cordelia Ikweme, Manuela Obiago, and Mrs. Antonia Udeaja. Hello, Dr. Anthony Nandi Obiago. Your departure is just too painful today. However, you did leave a mark and we know you walked through this path before you departed. You were somebody that always cared for people. You were somebody that loved. You loved the Lord and you loved people in return. I don't know where to begin except to say that I had a wonderful time growing up with you. I also know that when I got married, you just took on to my husband. He became your bros, G. On behalf of the Mwabuku family, I would like to say adieu, my brother. Bros G, your in-law misses you. He feels the pain just like I do. But most importantly, what I remember most about you is you always threatening me that if I come to Nigeria and don't get in touch with you, you will revoke my visa entering the country. What a way. What a way. Now that you're gone, the only good thing I see from your departure is that I can come into Nigeria without fear of my visa being revoked. Goodbye, my dear cousin. Stay well. Tell the Lord you were good. Take care and look over us. We love you. We will miss you terribly and we will continue to stay in touch with your family and pray for everybody. Adieu, my brother. Adieu. Good day, everyone. My name is Dr. Mokusong Fechuku, Dr. Nandia Jonin Biago, 
Because I'll use my uncle, my mom's cousin, whom I got to meet while I was running my medical program at the University of Ibadan. I met Uncle Nandi in the year 2014, a lovely uncle, a lovely man. There is so much of the memories that I have together with him. Why back then in school, he was more like my guardian, was the closest family I had. I spent most Christmas at his place. I was also privileged to go to the same church with him while at the bottom. He was such a lovable man. Uncle Nambe was not just an uncle, he became both a guardian, became a father, became my mentor in many ways. There were a whole lot of things to say about in that. There is quite a whole lot of things to say about. But one of the major things that would strike out is his lovely smiles, his cheerful personality, his sincerity, his openness, and his welcoming arms, everything that come to him. He taught me to believe in myself. He taught me the value of neatness, he taught me the value of friendship, he taught me the value of love for others, and above all, he taught me what it meant to love God. His popular, one of his popular saying was, so fair, he described Jesus as a and it's nothing else we are chasing in this world. So while I was there in school, there were a whole lot of things that comes to mind when he asked to me. So to you that I had no need as a medical student. Each time he will call me, he will ask after my health, he will ask after my finances, he will ask if I needed anything. And from time to time he always sent in money that was very, very helpful and very, very neat, very, very helpful all through my journey. Even as I graduated from medical school, Uncle Nandi kept touch with me through my years of internship search. I could remember there was a time I had a job at Sublet. The job was not so wonderful. Uncle Nandi had to encourage me to pursue growth and advancement in my career. He became a mentor in every way. Every time, it was always a pleasure to hear from him. Suddenly hearing of his death and after going through my phone books and my phone messages and seeing that we, we had just finished exchanging greetings and messages barely two weeks after the whole incident, barely two weeks before the whole incident sorry, was really heart breaking. But we had this confidence that he left an indelible marks in the hearts of everyone that came across. Him, he left a mark that no other person could leave in our hearts. And we are grateful that he lived his life as he lived. I do hope till we meet, but no more. Thank you for loving, thank you for giving all to everyone. I know the good Lord will grant your immediate family and everyone around you the grace to bear this great loss. I do, sir. To meet the partner. Thank you. A tribute to my brother, my business partner, my friend, Namdi. I know a lot of people will be talking about Namdi, astute businessman, Namdi's kindness, his gentleness, his smile, um, and a lot of other things. But tonight, today, I'd like to talk about Namdi, a true ambassador of the Most High God. A few months ago, a funding opportunity came up with the U U.S. government because of COVID. And I called him to inform him about it and give him the options. With this program, you could claim whatever your earnings were for the year. And a lot of people were claiming more than they had actually earned because no one verified. But Namdi actually claimed what he earned, even though I know he could have claimed more. 
but he chose to do the right thing even though no one was looking and that really ministered to me and I said to myself wow my brother has sold out to Christ so tonight today if there's anything that I am sure of is that Namdi is seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus and he has exchanged his cross for a crown so farewell my brother farewell my friend farewell my boarding business partner till we meet again so as most of you know uncle namdi was my godfather and he truly was the best godfather that i could ask for because aside from being such a kind, loving, and caring person, he took so much pride in being my godfather. And I always felt that when I was around him. Uncle Namdi was always a constant in my life. And my trips to Ibadan with him, Auntie Jun, and Luki truly were some of the happiest moments in my teenage years. Even though Uncle Namdi is no longer with us, I know that he's watching over all of us as a guardian angel. And I love you, Uncle Namdi. As I'm um, doing, doing this Zoom meeting, occasionally the network, and I'll be wondering where he is. Really enjoying himself. So, um, Namdi, uh, he's someone to look up to was quite a very hard-working father. He kept sleep nights. You know, sometimes you, you wouldn't exactly know when to call. These uh, sleepless nights were to communicate with his business associates all over the world because he needed his business running. So I thank God for his life. He's a true example, you know, for everyone to emulate that you need to walk in. Even though you knew Christ, it was not something you would just leave and then uh, believe that the angels would throw down things to you. But he believed in hard work and he showed it. He was a very loving man. He loved his family and exuded warmth, intense fellowship and associate, association with his own blood. He was really very loving. I, I always, you know, hugging him with his warmth on his tummy. <laughs> but uh, fact, he was still firm and sincere whenever he needed to do that. He'll be quiet with you and be firm. He didn't need to uh, shift grounds to please you exactly, if not exactly what he thought it would be. Tony was a man of peace. He was ready to discuss terms and make peace. He was not the pull down type that is um, seen in people with power and Our last special performance will be done by Obias Ada, Uncle Namdi.
to God. Oh God, in my He truly is the true sovereign God. The vote of thanks would be given by mm. Mr. Joe Obiago, the youngest brother of Uncle Namdis. Glory be to God in the highest. I know we are all sad. We are all heavy hearted. But I would like to please ask everyone, family and friends, associates of my brother, to weep not, to cry not because we have all the testimonies and we can see, we can know, we can feel that our brother Namdi Anthony Opiago is in a much, much better place. He left in a blaze of glory and he is with the saints and he is in the Lord's bosom and from there, he will give us light, he will protect, he will guard, he will guide. So we thank God for his life. You've seen a small panorama of the life he lived. He lived a life of love, he lived a life of faith, and a life of hope. And that should inspire us. That should give us strength. It should fortify us. It should grant us and give us solace. So we take that solace and we move forward. My cousin, uh, Joe Boy Edozian, once said, and this was at the passing of uh, our brother, uh, Uncle Yu, that the Obiagos, even in their 40, even in their time of crisis, have the fortitude to march forward. We do, and we always do. So please don't weep for Uncle Nambi. Celebrate him as we have just done, and glorify his life and his time. He was an embodiment of love, of peace, of patience, and of kindness and mercy. And those legacies will follow him and follow his descendants. So thank you very, very much for attending this event. With, I thank you on behalf of the Obiago family, Peter Obiago family. But also, um, I thank you for, uh, on behalf of the Anthony and the Obiago family. Um, our loving wife, unfortunately, uh, you can all appreciate uh, the, her state of mind at this time, uh, is unable to um, deliver her gratitude in person, but I'll do so on her behalf and thank everybody who has supported us all the family, all the friends, all the associates of uh, my brother, and all the people who have stood with us all this last month since this um, event happened. I would also like to thank um, our in-laws, the Oka family. They have been uh, a pillar of strength to us, as well as to their daughter, 
So we'd like to thank them for the role they have played uh, since this uh, event of the passing of our brother. And we would also like to thank all the participants since um, the interment took place last Friday in Asaba. So we remember especially the, uh, the officiating ministers, Pastor Bayo Alabi and Dr. Ann Ojimba and her music ministry. And for today, we would also like to thank our dear Pastor Biodu Oduwale, who was very close to Uncle Namdi. We thank him for his uh, strength, his prayers, and the exhortation uh, he gave us today. And we would like to um, thank all the corporate support we got from different uh, affiliated entities to uh, Uncle Namdi as demi rectors, my company, uh, com uh, GEC Group, together with the ABB Power Line. They have been there and all uh, the directors of our company, our various companies. We would also like to thank uh, the various service providers for the uh, funeral itself and today's event. So we had New Life Funeral Home in Asaba, who were very uh, kind to us. And we would like to uh, thank the florist who provided exceptional flowers from Benin, Mrs. Helen Uyagu. I'll readily give her reference any day. And it was a joy to discover that we had uh, fresh, lovely flowers so elegantly made just barely an hour and a half away from Masaba. And we would like to thank the tech group that have uh, supported us both in Asaba and here, uh, doing of uh, Happy Face uh, te Technology Company. And then of course, the beautiful, excellent performances we've had today uh, from Chris Bright and his uh, music ministry is very soothing. And uh, Tara and Bella, uh, Kaline, and Obias, all my daughters would really like to thank them. And also uh, Obias's uh, church, uh, Pastor Tolu, and uh, the choir and the team there have also been a, a world of support to us. And last but not the least is our very, very capable and competent MC for today, uh, Norma. <laughs> Thank you so very much for anchoring this event today. It is much appreciated. And thank you, family, the Obiagos, the Edosians, the Ilogos, and uh, all the extended families, of course, the Okechukus and uh, the uh, Wandus, and um, uh, the list goes on. The Adabas, we just thank you all for being a world of support to us. Uncle Namdi, so rest in perfect peace. And thank you all for being here for us, always. God bless you all. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. And amen. amen. To round this up, we will have special prayers for the family by Pastor Dave E.J. Pastor Dave E.J. is a senior pastor, Redeemed Christian Church of God, River of Life, Maryland, USA and a cousin of the Obiago family. My name is Pastor David EJ. I am the pastor of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the River of Life Parish in uh, 
Maryland, USA. I also am a cousin to the Obiagos. I want to commit the Obiago family into the hands of the Lord, even as we mourn the loss of um, our brother Nambi. Heavenly Father, I pray, O oh God, that you will comfort them and strengthen them even at this time. I bring Sister June, her children, um, the siblings of uh, Nambi, um, the loved ones, the extended family into your hands even at this time, that you will uphold their family, uphold every one of them and keep them, O oh God. You are the comforter, you know how to comfort them. Comfort them, O oh Lord, strengthen them even at this time. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, O oh Lord, that um, he, he's going to be with the Lord will not create a vacuum uh, or an opportunity for the enemy to sow seeds of discord. I pray that you unite the family, that out of the, the ashes will come beauty in the name of Jesus. I break every satanic pattern, every satanic cycle, and every curse and every spell over this family. In the name of Jesus, I break satanic covenants. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cancel every appointment with death. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says in Proverbs 23 verse 18, that surely there shall be an end. I legislate an end to this evil pattern. There will not be a reoccurrence in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Job chapter 5 verse 26, it says, Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age. I declare and declare that you will all fulfill your destiny. In the name of Jesus, there will be no premature death by the power and authority in the name of Jesus. Psalm 91 verse 16 says, it says, with long life, he will satisfy you all uh, and show you his salvation. That will be your portion, longevity. He came that you may have life and life more abundantly. No one can take your life again before your time. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I speak longevity. I speak life. I speak unity. In the name of Jesus, we establish a new covenant. I break satanic covenants in this family. Lord, in, in, in Genesis chapter, chapter 6 verse 18, the Lord established a covenant with Noah when there was a flood, when there was death. The covenant that, that kept Noah and his family. Today, oh Lord, I ask that you establish a covenant with the Biagos, the covenant of life in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh God, that you arise and scatter their enemies in the name of Jesus. Arise and scatter their enemies. I release fire into the enemy camp. I release fire into the enemy coven in the name of Jesus Christ. I destroy every horn, every altar risen against you people. I call thunder and fire to destroy every satanic evil water. I command to dry up in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper fashioned against your Biago family shall prosper in the name of Jesus Christ Lord I ask that you visit their foundation visit their foundation if there's anything in their foundation that does not allow for longevity you are their sure foundation I cover them with the blood of Jesus Holy Spirit I hand them over to you I pray of God that you linger and you brood over this family in the name of Jesus. I use the blood of Jesus as an ensign over their family. In the name of Jesus, the, the spirit of death, the angel of death will not enter their homes. In the name of Jesus. Lord, where, where brother Nnamdi stopped, let his children carry on. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise, oh God. I thank you for protection. I thank you, oh God, for restoration. I thank you, Lord, for your word declares that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. They will sing a new song, for you have torn their captivity. It will be like a dream. In the name of Jesus, anytime we hear about them, we shall hear testimonies. In this family, you raise apostles, you raise pastors, you raise teachers, you raise prophets, you raise evangelist in the name of Jesus when we hear of this family we shall hear glorious things I pronounce the blessings of God over this family I say it is well with the Biagos in the name of Jesus by the power and authority in the name of Jesus it is well with you you will sing a new song in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Ika tu abaha, ezika tu, azika tu abaha, 
Ika tanka tuwa Ili anu husuto Ambrekete usukuto Hamba hika tusuwa Ili hankutuwa Every evil pattern Seizes today in the name of Jesus I pronounce I pronounce the blessings of God Upon this family I say it is well with you In Jesus matchless name Amen God bless you all Hallelujah Hallelujah Amen Amen, amen. Closing this out, we will end uh, with a slideshow celebrating once again the life of Uncle Namdi. I 
Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. It has been a pleasure sharing with you all as we celebrate and remember the life of Uncle Namdis. Thank you for joining from wherever you are and we hope you have a wonderful evening. God bless. Also, please uh, be on the lookout in the, last, in the next couple of days for a memory book which will be posted on the website, anobiago.farewellforevermiss.com. Thank you. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello, beautiful people. Um, I'm Obiageli Obiago, um, Ada, uh, Dr. A.N. Obiago. For those of you all who would like to say anything, the program is technically over, but if you would still like to um, make a testimony or, or, have, or do a tribute, you're more than welcome to stay online and speak. Um, but the program is actually officially ended, but go ahead, we're still broadcasting. Feel free to speak about uh, my father and uh, express your sentiments. God bless you. Thou hast made thou my vision, O oh Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, see that thou art. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. We
Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame And I love that old cross Where the dearest and best For a world of lost sinners was slain So I cherish the old rugged cross He's at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown And when before the throne I stand Jesus died my soul to save My lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all All to Him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow so I'll cherish the old